How I long, breathe the air of heaven. The pain is gone, mercy fills the street. To look upon the one who bled to save me, and walk with him for all eternity. When all will bow before Him There will be a day That death will be no more Standing face to face He will die and rose again Holy, holy is the Lord And then We sang to the land And in the end We see that He was worthy When He returns To wipe the way around here The day when all will bow before Him There will be a day When death will be no And stand beside the heroes of the faith With one voice, a thousand generations Sing what is the Lamb who was slain It's on that day On that day, we join the resurrection The heroes of the faith And with one voice A thousand generations Sing what is the last who was slain
Hallelujah. Yes, you are coming back. And you are coming back for us, for your church, for the bride of Jesus Christ. And as we hold the cup and the bread, let us lift up before the Lord. Let us acknowledge everything that He has done for us. And everything that we have, we owe it to Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your undying love. Thank you, Lord, for your everlasting love. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, for loving each one of us just as I am. Lord, we come to you just as we are. We come to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You love us when we are at the mountaintop. You love us when we are in the valley. You love us, Lord, when we, when we are enjoying the victory that you have given to us. You also love us when we go through failure. Lord, the steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. Though he fall, he shall not be cast down. I commit all my brothers and sisters here in the family of God into your hand. I thank you as we hold the cup and the bread. We have this assurance, this covenant that you have made with us. And Lord, that you will enable us to live by faith and not by sight. And you will enable each one of us to experience all your promises while we are on earth. They are yea and amen. And the day will come, Lord, you will likewise to transform us. And that, Lord, in the twinkling of an eye, we will be with you. And together with those, our loved ones that have gone on before us, gone, gone ahead before us, Lord, that we will be united in your presence in heaven. Thank you, Father, for this blessed hope. Meanwhile, Lord, there are those who are here, they are having sicknesses. Thank you for your promise that by your stripes we are healed. There are those who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, they will fear no evil because you are their bonus. You are their courage. You are their strong power. And Lord, there are those in our midst, they are going through because, Lord, of this inflation and hard time. And Lord, you have promised that you are Jehovah Jireh. Lord, you will open the windows of heaven and pour down your blessing and there will be not enough room to contain it. Lord, we want to thank you. We want to praise you. Hallelujah. Indeed, Jesus, you are our all in all. Amen. You are our all in all. Hallelujah. Lord, if there are those who are sick and not well in our midst, Lord, may you stretch out your hand to touch them. There are those who are troubled in their hearts. May you speak peace into their heart, into their mind. Thank you, Father. As we break the bread, Lord, we partake of it. Amen. As your lamb. As your lamb, hallelujah, as your sheep, oh, within your fold. Lord, we thank you for laying down your life for us and love us to the very end. Thank you, Father. Let's break the bread together. Thank you, Father, for the cup. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Let's partake of it.
A very good morning to everyone. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Though it's a wet morning, but nothing could dampen our spirit when we come to the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am deeply loved, greatly, greatly blessed, blessed, and highly I favored. Look at somebody and say, you are ah, deeply love, loved, greatly, greatly blessed, blessed, and highly favored. Favor. Collectively, we are ah, deeply love. loved, greatly blessed, blessed, and highly favored. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. Three things. Love God, love, love people, God, love, love life. life. Amen. There'll be a lot of distraction. There'll be a lot of inconvenience in life sometimes. But putting all aside, you know, when you begin to comb through life issue and all that, the things which matter most is three things. Love God, love people, love life at the end of the day. One more time, let's confess. Love God, love, love people, people, love, love life. life. Okay? And lastly, let's declare. Hallelujah. When was the last time that you say something wonderful about yourself? Probably last week. But once a week is not enough. You got to say it every day, every moment of the day. Shall we? Ready? Want to go? I am who God says I, I am. am. I have I what God, God says I have. have. And, and I, I can, can do what, what God, God says I can do. do. One more time. I am, I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. And I can do what God says I can do. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I would like to invite you to stand just with me for about two minutes. It's been quite a significant week. We need to pray for our judiciary system. We have to pray that God's favour, God's protection, God's wisdom be upon the judges and upon our nation. The Bible says this, righteousness exalt a nation. Amen. Lift up your hand. Join your hearts together with me. Father, we want to thank you truly. You watch over the entire Malaysia. Lord, both East Malaysia, West Malaysia, and Lord, for years we have been praying, we have been praying, we have been praying, we have been crying out unto you, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that you have heard our prayer without fear nor favour, hallelujah. Lord, those judges, they have carried out their judgment as well as the verdict. We want to thank you, we want to praise you, amen. According to your word, righteousness exalt the nation. And none of us, we could escape from the principle of what you reap is what you sow. We want to thank you, we want to praise you that righteousness will continue to prevail in Malaysia. Righteousness will continue to prevail in all aspects of Malaysia. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for watching over Malaysia. We just celebrated our 65th anniversary. We want to thank you, we want to praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Continue to pray for Malaysia. Amen. Amen. Continue to pray for Malaysia. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Keep praying. Thank you, worship team. I would like to share with you what the Lord has laid upon my heart in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. There are only 12 verses. Therefore, I'm going to walk you through. I'm going to take you through by reading these 12 verses. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. To the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God's final judgment and glory. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly. The love of every one of you all abounds towards one another so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and to give you who are troubled rest with us. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God, on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, this shall be punished with everlasting destructions from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because of our testimony among you was believed. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the works of faith with power, that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and that you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
The entire chapter 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, is talking about the, another phase of second coming. The first phase of second coming is rapture. Now in chapter 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, is talking about the second coming. Now, to help you to capture it easily, can I have the picture that talk about rapture? That's right, okay? The entire, we talk about the soon return of the Lord, is basically phase one, phase two. Phase one, rapture. Phase two is second coming of Christ, okay? Phase one is Christ's return for his church. Phase two is Christ's return with his church. That's right. Now, since COVID uh, restriction being lifted, so many of us are talking about trips, local trip, overseas trip, anywhere, everywhere, you know. But there are certain people, they talk about trip to the space, space trip. Can you imagine that? It has already happened. Let's look at the picture of Sir Richard Branson, you know, and he has already done that together with his team. Let me have another picture. Uh, okay, so you have heard about that, right? But long ago in the Bible, really, God has already laid down in His Word that for all believers, there'll be one trip called rapture. The Lord will appear, and then with the voice of the angels, with the trump of God, He collects all the believers. That's the time. Listen, there'll be zero question on the surface of the earth. Zero. Literally zero. But you're saying that no. Because in Matthew chapter 24, there is this descriptions about the two men, king in the field, one will be left behind. That means out of every two Christians, there will be one Christian left behind. Well, that depends on the definitions of the word Christian that you use. A churchgoer, it's not a Christian. Okay? One that believes like many of those, especially in America, they have to fill in the form, what's a religion? Christianity. Just because their grandparents were Christian, so they write down, you know, Christianity. Just like many of us here Asian, we write the word Buddhism, you know, Taoism. It's just because our family come from the kind of an ancestor line. No. Nope. Strictly, rapture happened, there'll be zero Christian. That's when the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that God will withdraw His Holy Spirit. But right now, His Holy Spirit is really with us, in us, okay? Harvesting different, different people that as long as they open their heart to receive Jesus Christ. But when that happened, when rapture happened, there'll be zero question, okay? And already, as I've said, people like, Sir Richard Branson, they're talking about space traveling. But you and I, we could not afford a ticket, you know, to ride in his spaceship. But God promised us that when Christ comes, he will take us back to be with him. But there is another trip. We are coming back to this earth. It's not just you going as a believer, but you are coming back to this earth together with him. The Bible says to judge the world. Now, that, afterwards, we will look into it in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. I have already read to you the entire chapter, but it's found in the middle part of the scripture. That, later on, we'll talk about it. What is the assembly of God's stand? We are assemblies of God. Therefore, this is our stand. Assembly of God believe in pre-trip. But there are others who believe in mid-trip. There are others who believe in post-trip. It's not confusing at all. It's very simple. Tribulation. Pre-trip means before tribulation start. Before the word tribulation means very difficult, very hard, very demanding. You know, those moments, it's difficult to survive. So, Assemblies of God, based on the weight of the Scripture, and going through the entire, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the Assemblies of God doctrine is pre-trip. That means when Christ comes, just before the tribulation start, the church will be taken up. Not the physical building called the church. Neither it is 
church goer. It is believer. Okay? So that's called pre-trip. But there are others who believe that tribulation needs to start first. After that, somewhere right in the middle, you know, just before Antichrist becomes evil, then God will take the Christian up. There's another view that the entire tribulation got to carry out. So last minute, then Christ will appear to take his people out. Now, it does not matter whatever view, whether it's pre-trip, mid-trip, post-trip. The most important thing is be ready. And be ready all the time. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. How can you be ready? We'll talk about that afterwards, okay? Now, I'm going to show you the pictures concerning pre-trip, mid-trip, post-trip. Okay, the first one has to do with pre-trip. Pre-trip means just before year of tribulation start, the church is taken up. After the seven years of tribulation, Christ will bring his church back to judge the earth. Mid-trip is very simple. In the middle, the seven years is divided into three and a half, three and a half. The first three and a half is not as bad as the second three and a half. But somewhere in the middle, the church will be caught up, raptured, take place, and then come back together with Christ three and a half years later. Okay? And uh, post-trip means the church need to go through, Christian need to go through tribulation. Then, at the same time, we'll come back immediately, you know, together with Christ to judge the earth. So basically, Assemblies of God believe in pre-trip. How many of you, you are Assemblies of God and believe in pre-trip? Can I see your hand? Those of you confused, <laughs> don't know what to choose. You don't have to choose. You know, this is the Assemblies of God stand and the theologian, they have studied and they have presented during the General Council and the entire council have endorsed it and this is our stand worldwide whether it is Assemblies of God of Malaysia, Assemblies of God of America, Assemblies of God of Singapore, Assemblies of God of Korea, it is pre-trip, okay? Of course, within a denomination, there'll be individuals, they are entitled to their own opinion. But official stand, our official stand is pre-trip, okay? So, having said that, you know that now it is a two separate event. Can I have the first picture, please? Right, rapture first. Then only... Second coming. The one that got caught up, rapture, you will have to come back seven years later. You cannot say that I want to take a holiday, I got a chance. No, you belong to the army of the Lord. Okay? And so he is bringing every believer that has caught up together with him during the rapture to come back to judge the earth. Now, having said that, rapture, how is that going to happen? What happened in the Old Testament, it happened in the New Testament. Let's start with the first picture, Enoch. The Bible says Enoch walked with God and God just took him up. The second one is what? Elijah, you know? And uh, Elisha, with his own naked eye, watched Elijah being taken to heaven and then left behind his what? His robe that represent anointing, okay? And Elijah said to Elisha, with your own eyes, if you see me go up, and if you lay hold upon my robe, that the anointing will be passed on to you. So, Elisha, he was very focused. In fact, just prior to this incident about Elijah being taken up, many of his friends, they give advice to Elisha and says, hey, he's going to battle. Hey, no, he's going to, you know, this place, that place. He says, no. I'm not going to listen to you guys. I'm going to just keep my eyes on Elijah, my master. I don't know where he's going, but I ain't going to be distracted. I'm going to just keep my eyes on him, knowing that it can happen anytime. It's a lesson for you and I to learn. It can happen anytime. Rapture can happen anytime. We are to keep our eyes on Jesus. Don't depend on what people say. Don't be bothered by what people say. And don't pay attention to what people say. Christ has already come. Because we know that when he comes, you and I, we know. After this, we're going to read a little bit more and also get to know some of the other scripture that give us the assurance that we will know. Okay? But in the New Testament, we have got Philip. If you know the story of in the book of Acts, how he preached the gospel to this eunuch, and the next moment was that the Bible says, he was taken, but not to heaven, away from eunuch. It's sort of like the spirit 
uh, spirited him, took him away, and went somewhere else to preach. Okay? First, there was a revival in the city he was preaching. But he was not intoxicated by the success of the evangelistic meeting in the big city. God said, hey, come on, I need you. Come away to the desert. And he went. Okay? God gave him the power that was able to overrun the chariot. The next moment was after he finished his task baptizing this eunuch, the Spirit of the Lord just took him away. So it is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of God. Now, as I was sharing with you some of this thought that I have, now, I would like you to go back to the Scripture together with me in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly. The love of every one of you all abounds towards each other, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. In the midst of going through these uh, persecutions and tribulations, one thing that positively impacted the Thessalonians while waiting for the blessed hope is the faith grow, the love abound, you know? And so much so that it is not something very quiet. Uh, Paul was able to take notice the believers around the, the Thessalonica, among the Thessalonians, they took notice that patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations. When we, even right now, you know, COVID has taught the whole world. COVID has taught every one of us a lesson that life is not a bed of roses. It happens to anyone. It can happen to anyone. First, it happened to me. Then I stay away from my family members. And then next, Sister Sunny was the one that got COVID, you know. And, but I'm saying that nobody is spared. All of us, we do know that, you know, uh, so-and-so that we know got COVID, recovered. So-and-so got COVID. But not as scary as the early part, that whoever got COVID then become the victim. That, that was really very sad. But of course, COVID created a lot of suffering. It has got a lot of repercussions in terms of business, supply chain, you know, many shops closed down, but there are new ones that open up. But most people are struggling, and even to this day. Uh, but it is beside this that we find that when we come to know the Lord, when we make a stand that we are a child of God, we do face persecution and tribulations. I'm for one, I've experienced that because I came from a Buddhist background. So when I came to know the Lord, I experienced what it means by not allowed to eat my meal, not allowed to come home, gate being locked. I have to lift my, then I was a student, I have to lift up my bicycle and put over the gate to climb into the garden in order to have access to the house and so on and so forth. And then in school, there'll be people who make fun of you when you come out to work. When they talk not so nice things, you don't participate, then they call you Holy Joe and for the ladies, will be Holy Josephine, you know, and such. But I'm telling you, persecution is something very real. Let's just look at the list of the five missing persons. The five missing person. Okay. Out of these five missing person, I think Raymond Cobb is a famous pastor. And then we have got Joshua Helmi. Likewise to his wife Ruth. They are pastors. So we have got three. These are social activists that in our country, suddenly they disappeared. Suddenly, you know, uh, nobody knows their whereabouts. Because of what they have been doing among us, they were trying to reach out to all the Malaysians. And their families, they are suffering. Because after so many years, they still cannot find the whereabouts. They don't actually know what actually happened. And if they are alive, they are alive. If they are not alive, they couldn't even find the corpse, the body, you know. But the scripture do tell us this, you know. Uh, let's look at that verse that it says in uh, 2 Timothy. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And uh, while evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But all those who desire to live a godly life, what happened? Will be persecuted. And so in the case of Thessalonians, 
these Christians in Thessalonica, they were not spared either. Neither was this Paul himself was spared. In fact, none of them they were spared. But all in all, this is what Paul is saying. In the midst of going through all these persecutions and tribulations and trial and testing, he says, hold steady. You know the day will come when Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Now, let's differentiate between these incidents that is recorded here. In the early part of Thessalonians, this is what it says that, you know, Christ will return and the trump of God will sound. And then every one of us will be caught up. At the same time, the dead go up first, then those of us will be alive. Okay? But this incident here is different. It is talking about the second coming. And so, this is what Paul is saying. He says that in view of everything that you have gone through, in spite of that, your faith grows exceedingly. The love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. It's fantastic. We ourselves, we boast of you among the churches. You know, we let everyone know that your patience, your faith, you know, it's very evident. And as far as your suffering is concerned, what you suffer, it will not be in vain. Because you know why? It says that in verse 6, since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulations those who trouble you. He's saying that God is watching. Whatever you go through, those who trouble you, God will repay them. Okay? And to give you who are troubled, rest. At the same time, you go through all this, God will give you rest. Peace. Peace of God. The God of peace will give you the peace, peace of God. And with us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I was telling you just now, and you ever wonder who could not experience rapture? Here, the key, it says, those who could not experience the rapture do not know God. Secondly, do not obey the gospel. Do we have people like that in our midst? It is very sad. Maybe not in MMC setting, Penangfus Assembly of God setting. We try to make sure that everyone that comes to our church, they will somehow know God and accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and obey the gospel, whether it is English service or whether it is a Mandarin service or at the same time it is what? Hokkien service or even Nepali service. You see? So also bear in mind all those who are serving the Lord, especially whether you are department of the head or ushers and all that. The most important question after asking how are you is, have you given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? That's the very most important question. And not every Sunday when we meet each other, how are you, how are you, how are you, have you eaten, uh, where are you going for your next meal? Okay. So here it gives us a clue that, number one, in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God, and then those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now verse 9 tells us their destiny. This shall be punished with everlasting destructions from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. When He comes in that day, not referring to rapture, referring to second coming. When He comes in that day, to be glorified in His saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Okay, can I have the picture that Christ is riding on the white horse? That day, the second coming, together with his army, the next picture. Multitudes and multitudes and multitudes. Can you imagine the, the contemporary church, the present church, the church in 2022 will join together with the church, you know, in the past centuries. Multitudes and multitudes, and he is leading us. That will be called that day. It's called that day. So, in view of that, what are we to expect? Know God. You got to know God. You got to know Him for who He is. Secondly, obey 
the gospel. The gospel is our hope for the non-Christian and for the Christian as well. The gospel. The gospel is more than just, you know, kind of like coming to church. The gospel is, He is our hope, our salvation, our all in all. Now, a couple of things that I would like to highlight to you. When the Lord comes in that day, when the Lord returns, Okay, what was he looking for? I would like you to look at Luke chapter 18, verse 8. When the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on earth? You see, that's the point. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. He is looking for faith. But there's another translation that helps to make it a little bit clearer. Because sometimes the word faith is a story. Like, oh, you've got to have great faith. Your faith must be so vibrant. Your faith must be so, you know, so, so alive. And your faith must be able to move out. No, 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 no. I like the first verse that I share with you. Will he really find faith on the surface of the earth? The things which attract to him is not the building of the church or how big it's a ministry or how wonderful, you know, the drama presentation. No. But faith, faith, it can be very simple, as small as the master's seat. But I like what another translation says. Can I have it? I tell you, God will help his people quickly. But when the Son of Man comes again, will he find people on earth who believe in him? Shall we read together? I tell you, God will help his people quickly. But when the Son of Man comes again, will he find people on earth who believe in him? That scenario happened before. Recently, because of the water level that gone down, climatic change, they call it. Happens in China, happens in Texas. I was told that the dam in China one of those very, very big dams, the water receipt has gone down. And suddenly what has been exposed was those old artifacts and old buildings, you know? And some of these old artifacts, uh, Buddhist images and all that statue, been around for hundreds of years, but it was covered with water. But now everything is being exposed. And then in Texas, they have found new dinosaurs' footprint. You know, because the water has gone down. Now, the ancients will, according to the Bible, there were only eight that was revealed that they believe in God. There were hundreds and thousands of people. That has happened in the book of Genesis chapter 6. No works up, you know. That's when the Bible says that God was waiting for the multitudes, but none, only eight. His eyes was upon the entire earth, but there weren't any. There was this great flood. But before the great flood took place, the eyes of the Lord was upon the surface of the earth, and he only found eight, eight people believing. And they were brought into the ark. So if Christ were to come again, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 18, verse 8, that when the Son of Man comes again, will he find people on earth who believe in him? When the Son of Man comes again, will he find every first assemblies of God, Penang, Penang MMC, believe in him? Let me hear a big amen. Amen. You see, the thing that connects us with him is not how much we can prepare, how holy we are. Huh? or how, how much work we can do to impress Him. The word is believe. Say believe. Louder. Louder. Amen. Time and again, the Lord tells us that it is not by guessing. <laughs> the other day, I read in the paper, and wow, there was just both in the social media. There was this lady. It says that somehow it's by instinct. She just felt that she's going to win a big lottery, and she did one. You know, 
uh, in East Malaysia. But when it comes to salvation, it's not like that. It is not by your instinct or how you feel or you think that you're safe or you're not safe. No. You've got to go by the Word of God. Now, this is what Jesus said, okay? In John chapter 10, verse 14, I'm the good shepherd and I know my sheep and my own knows me. Not only He knows you, but He says that you know Him. How many of us, we know Him? Can I see your hand? Hallelujah. That's the, the thing that matters. Nothing is going to change that because you know Him. Hello. And He knows you. And when you know Him, He knows you. You know, the Bible tells us that you'll be able to hear His voice in John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know Him, and they follow me. Wow. It talks about that kind of a relationship that you know Him and that He knows you and that you can hear His voice and that, you know, you will follow Him. And that's why, just now when we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, it says that in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God. Do you know God? The answer is what? Yes! Hallelujah! Not only you were born again, not only you were baptized, not only you were filled with the Holy Spirit, and that you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that He is your Savior, and that He is your provider, and that He is your baptizer, and that He is your healer, and that He is your coming King. Hallelujah. King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yes, you may go through some persecution, trial and testing, but nothing is going to stop you from continuing to know Him. Continue to love Him and continue to serve Him. And you know, out of that fiery trial, your faith grows and that your love for everyone abounds. Hallelujah. And through the trial and the tribulation, you have learned what it means to have faith and have patience. Amen. And that is manifested in your life. Okay, let's look at John chapter 14. It says that, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. That is the personal promise. He will come back to take you. So many times we read this verse, it's as though like a person about to die. And then suddenly... You know, oh, I see the light, I see the light, 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 light. Yes, I've seen many incidences like that. And sometimes they say, oh, I can hear angels singing, singing, singing. But we can't see anything. But in that last few moments, somehow the grace of God manifested and this person able to experience the extraordinary encounter with God. But that's exactly what the Lord Jesus says. It's more than just taking an individual home. He's talking about, he's coming back to take everyone home. If I go and prepare a place for you, that means I will come again and take you. He will personally come, which is consistent with, consistent with the teaching in First Thessalonians as well as Second Thessalonians. The rapture, he comes to take us. And then when he comes back to the earth, he brings us along with him. Okay. Now, some translation translated, in my father's house, there are many mentioned. The word mentioned there, there is not used. But rather, it says that in my father's house, there are enough room, more than enough room, the translation. So that gives a bit better picture. Because how could, in my father's house, hello, if you buy a single story, it's a single story. Is that so? If you buy a Samidi, it's a Samidi. If you buy a bungalow, it's a bungalow. How could it be in my father's house? There are many mentions. Of course, this is figuratively speaking. That means the house must be very, very big. And our translation, render it simply, in my father's house, there are enough room for everyone. More than enough. I'm coming back to take you home with me. These are the promise of the Lord. And we, we know that His promise is what? Yea and? Yea and? Amen. Yea and Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 gives us the assurance. Every believer, those who really know God and obey the gospel, for God did not appoint us to wrath, 
but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I would like to refer you to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. Can I have that verse? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you, who are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Move on. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, and be patient with all. What kind of a church was that? For us, it's like, wow, for a church to be ready for rapture, every one of the believers must be very mature, holy, huh? And also got a hello. And all of them, wow, when they pray, the entire building will be caught up with fire, caught, you know, filled with fire, shake. At the same time, wow, they carry such a great anointing. Nonsense. Paul was simply talking to the Thessalonica church. Look at it, the context of rapture, okay? Okay? Don't look at it finding fault. I'm happy to see clearly. He was talking to a group of people. Hey, rapture is going to happen. But uh, I'm using Penang style saying, uh, hey, rapture is going to happen. But uh, you people are uh, in your midst. Uh, uh, you have got people who are unruly. You've got people who are fearful, faint-hearted. Uh, you've got people who are weak. That was the kind of a congregation. Doesn't that sound familiar? Hello? Yes or no? Huh? Yes or no? It sounds like any church. It sounds like our church. It sounds like our English congregation. It sounds like our Hokkien congregation. It sounds like our Mandarin congregation. It sounds like any one of us. Yet in spite of that, Paul is saying that, come on, realize this, that you have got this blessed hope. But meanwhile, but on earth, you know, do something about it. You know, warn those who are unruly. Comfort those who are faint-hearted, fearful. At the same time, uphold, help those who are weak. Most of all, be patient to all. So that was the kind of a people that Paul was talking about, please, 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 don't go and harbor the thought that, wow, I think just before rapture, the entire church becomes so perfect, so faultless, so no flaws, no problem and all that, because rapture is going to happen, ma, you know, nonsense. Rapture can happen anytime, but there will be still a lot of irregularity in the church. But what happened is, let's not judge one another. Let's not criticize one another. You know, but rather, let our faith grow. Let our love abound towards one another. Now let's move on. Always pursue what is good both for yourself and for all. Move on. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Move on. Verse 19. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the prophecy in the midst of going through all this, you know, the up and the down everyday life of church. It says that don't quench the spirit. Don't despise prophecy. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Ah, this part I must emphasize to you. We as believers, we must abstain every form of evil. Whatever that appears to be evil, stay away from it. You know, stay away from it. Okay? If you know that your heart is not comfortable, Stay away from it. Whether it can be a word or it can be an action or it can be an attitude, just stay away from it. Okay? Now verse 23. Take note. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you. You got to lay hold upon this verse. You know, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and that may your spirit, soul, body. See how thorough Paul was talking about? To get ready for the rapture, okay? Your spirit, your soul, your body, within, without, nothing is spare. How many of you know that you are a person consists of spirit, soul, and body? But not the animal. The animal has got probably the body and the soul, but without a spirit. But what set us apart from the animal kingdom is we have got a spirit, soul, and body. So the part talk about emotions and about mind. The Bible tells us that everyone here, 
at the sound of my voice, you have got a spirit, you have got a soul, you have got a body. Who can keep you blameless unto that day? Only God. And will He do it? The promise is 24. He who calls you is faithful. He also will do it. So many times we take this verse out of context. In what sense? Can you apply? Yes. But actually it's about something which is impossible. Keeping our spirit, soul and body blameless. Only God can do it. But we quoted this verse by talking to a student taking a university entrance exam. Oh, God has called you into that university. He who has called you, He will also do it. You know, or somebody wanted to start a business. Oh, he has called you to be a businessman. He will call you. He will also do it. Yes. It, this is the third shade of meaning, the fourth shade of meaning, perhaps. You know, but the primary confirmations, the primary meaning, significant is to keep you spirit, soul, body, blameless. It is God, God, God. And he is faithful. And he will do it. Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Don't that help you to heave a sigh of relief? Oh, I see. It's not about me. It is about Him. It, oh, I see. It's not by my own effort. It is Him. All I need to do is just believe, have faith in Him, and He will do it. The word sanctify means progressively. I don't know about your experience, but... Referring to the scripture, I can see that it says that if you are in Christ, Paul says we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows. Your love for every one of you abounds. Not only that, you know, you go through trial and persecution, your patience, your faith multiplies many times over as you endure tribulations. This is truly something marvelous. It is a manifestation concerning the evidence of the righteousness of God at work in you. Hallelujah. Over the years, I want to give God the glory. Spirit, soul, and body. I've seen how I've grown. Amen. Hallelujah. Over the years, I've gone through trial and tribulations. Okay? But I've seen how God moved me. Sanctify means it's not immediate. It means, you know, one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time, one step at a time. And God is really helping me, you know, to grow in every aspect. I can see the same thing among our church leaders. I can see the same thing among our church members. God sanctify you. I want you to just memorize this first. That can we go back to spirit, soul, and body? First Thessalonians chapter 5. That's right. Please read together with me. This is for you to stand upon it, especially when it comes to rapture. Remind yourself it is God, it is God who's going to do it. Take a deep breath. Okay, and let's read together. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will also do it. Verse 24, he who calls you is faithful who also will do it. Give the Lord a hand. How many of you now, you have the assurance that when He comes, it is about Him and He will take you back. Can I see your hand? Come on. Just to tie in a little bit something and I will conclude. The important thing is, knowing this verse is not enough. You got to really pay attention to what it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8. It says that, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God. No God is not good enough, but also on those who do not obey the gospel. The knowing and the obeying of the gospel, it goes hand in hand. Every day of our life, every day of our life, in every situation, know Him, and then know Him, and then obey Him, and know Him, and obey Him. James says this, faith without work is... Day. Knowing Him is one thing. You got to what? Learn to obey Him. For those who do not know Him and choose not to obey His gospel, the Bible says, what is reserved for them is punishment with everlasting destruction. Okay? Verse 11. Can we go to the main text? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. 
uh, as I conclude. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God will count you worthy of this calling. Paul said, I constantly pray for you. And my prayer is I constantly pray for Penang First, the entire congregation. Hallelujah. Amen. That all of you will be worthy. Hallelujah. God will count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of His goodness and the work of faith with power. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, make it clearer. I don't need to explain, but let's just look at NIV. Just this part, verse 11. NIV. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of His calling. Worthy of His calling. What kind of a calling? The call for rapture, the call for second coming, the call that while waiting for Him and that your faith may grow, your love will abound, and that, you know, you will continue to multiply in terms of patience and faith, okay? And endure all the persecution and tribulations, and that by His power, He may bring to fruition your every desire for good and your every deed prompted by faith. That means inside you, you have got this longing while waiting for the Lord to come back. I want to bring so and so to the Lord. I want to grow in every aspect of my Christian world. I want to trust God more. NIV is explaining that all this will come to pass with the help of His power, you know, and that He may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. And so in conclusion, it says, we pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in Him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How many of us, our heart is so settled now that when rapture happens, we know that it is God who is going to keep us blameless, spirit, soul, and body, and you'll be ready on that day. Can I see your hand? Come on. Praise God. Please stand together with me. Amen. Let us strive to know God every day. Let us strive to obey God, obey His gospel every day. As we sing this wonderful heaven's hymn, we begin with the chorus. like to delegate this task to you. The Bible tells us that 100 sheep, you know, 99 is in the fold, but there's one that's out there wandering. As you look at the chair around us, 
I'm sure you remember so and 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 so for whatever reason that they are not here. And you who are here Sunday after Sunday, remind them, invite them. Let's go back to the house of God. You know, it is good to come to the house of God. I watch a lot of Zoom. I participated in a lot of Zoom, all this social media meeting. But nothing can compare with making an effort to come to the house of the Lord. You are so blessed. May your cup runneth over. And at this time, just lift up your hand and you think about so and so, so and so, not here this morning. Give them a call, visit them or whatever, or talk to them using video call and tell them, see you this Sunday in the house of God. Will you lift up your hand? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for those who are watching online. We thank you for those who are here. And we thank you for those who are yet to make the decisions to come back to the house of God. I pray, Father, that you will give them that strength. You will give them that prompting. And Lord, somehow they are able to overcome all the obstacles, whether it has to do with no transport or whether it has to do with the weather or whatever personal reason. And Lord, that they will once again come to the house of God Amen. and to receive from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The fresh word, the fresh anointing, the fresh touch of the Spirit of God. And even as we go our separate way, we are united as one in Christ Jesus, even right now. I commit all my brothers and sisters here into your hand. Help us to continue, Lord, to think about Second Thessalonians chapter 1. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for the book of Thessalonians. It's so wonderful to hear from you, hallelujah, that you've got a special word for all of us to get ready for this special occasion called the rapture and the second coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you and God bless everyone watching online and YouTube. God bless you. Amen.